Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and basically give you guys some tips and explain a little bit about the Devotion Tree uh, for more so Grimdon new players. If you're experienced, this video is not really going to help you with much. Um, so before I start, I want to let you guys know what I'm using. Um, don't mind the fact that this is an outdated version. Uh, this is called a Grimdon Build Calculator by Grim Tools. You can find this if you just go to grimtools.com, I believe it's called. Uh, you can also Google for the offline calculator. I may put a link for that in the description, but like I said, this is an outdated version, so I don't know if it's going to take you to the right one. Um, you can also theorycraft your character here. It's good to use the offline one if you can find an updated one, just because I feel like the website is getting flooded a bit and it does go down often. But more so, we're just going to go here and select the class so we can click our devotion tree. Now, um, also for some reason on the website, my devotion tree is bugged and already shows everything highlighted, which is another reason why I wanted to use the offline calculator. So what the devotion tree is essentially in Grim Dawn is it's kind of like the way I like to look at it as your third class. If you have an offensive class with an offensive class, make your devotions defensive. If you have a great defensive class, but because you're so defensive, you have no form of life leech, get life leech from your devotion tree. If you've got great single target, but you're lacking AOE, use the devotion tree to help you with AOE. The devotion tree encompasses every type of element and every type of style of build. It's got every type of element going from, for example, if we search here, like, let's search poison. You can see poison is highlighted in red. If we search vitality, you know, as an example, vitality is highlighted in red. Even if you search pet, pet is highlighted in red. And following, if you were to search things like offensive ability, which is for crit, you can see, or if we do crit. Now, essentially, the devotion tree is there to help fix whatever it is that you're missing. Now, there are the baby points, which are all passives, which are these, and then you have the big ones, which are the red ones. Now, the way the red devotions work is, let's use a couple of examples. Hungering Void is 100% chance on attack. That means if you put it on a skill, doesn't matter if it has a zero second cooldown or 27 second cooldown, when you press the ability, the skill activates. Remember that each one of these level up to 15. If you have something, for example, like Raise the Dead, Raise the Dead says it has a 20% chance uh, to proc on attack. Now, uh, one thing to note about the 20% is, let me go ahead to my class really fast, select a soldier, put some points in so that we can use Blitz. Now, Blitz, if you look at it, has a 3.8 second cooldown. If on my Devotion Tree, uh, let's see, this is eight required. I'm just gonna do something really fast just to unlock this. Give me one second, boom. Boom, is this red? Yeah, it is. Okay, so if I go over here to Revenant and you look that Revenant requires, or sorry, Revenant is a 20% chance on attack. If I support Blitz with this, it actually goes up. Oh, it doesn't actually, but it's supposed to. It's outdated. Um, skills will compensate for the cooldown, meaning the longer the cooldown of the skill, the higher the percentage of chance for it to proc will go up. And this is to kind of make it feel a bit more consistent, you know? If you use, for example, like a six second cooldown skill, it's probably gonna have like a 60 to 80% chance to proc. So this is one thing to take note in when you're doing this. Now, um, one thing I wanna explain is how to traverse and progress through your devotion tree. So the first thing to note is, let's say we want to unlock Hawk. So Hawk requires one green affinity, but gives three. It's very important to pay attention to the constellation bonus. So for example, I put a point here and I can grab Hawk. Now by grabbing Hawk, I now have the ability to remove the initial node. Why? Because Hawk gives three as a bonus, which means we now have three. You can use this to do anything you want in the game. And it's very important to do this because of the fact that without removing these mini nodes and without bouncing your points around to the more efficient ones, there's no way you're gonna be able to unlock a gigantic constellation, maybe two gigantic constellations, while still having very good pathing, uh, or just in general, like the things you select. Now, it is important to note that on your devotion tree, it's very, very easy to respect your devotions, which means you should be picking up the, you should basically, in my opinion, focus on one thing first. So, you know, if you're playing like, 
a fire element, you can aim towards one of the big fire ones, which I think Magi over here is like a big fire guy. He's not that big, but you can see like there's a big proc here. I guess this is maybe more burn oriented, but as a new player, it's good to focus on one thing at first and start building your way towards it because it's easy. Then after you've built your way towards it, you should take a look at your current character and say, okay, what is it that I need? You know, if you've played Path of Exile, uh, there's a common saying in Path of Exile, whereas spec resistance on your tree and remove them as you get gear to replace it. The same thing applies to the devotion tree, right? So for example, you don't get much Aether Res and Chaos Res in the early game, but you can get it on the devotion tree relatively, not easily, but it does show up in, in a few places, you know? Um, so be really like you can you've got a lot of flexibility with this it's very easy to respec the only thing you need to do to respec in this is just get aether crystals which you can farm at warden if you guys are familiar warden it's the first boss in act one you can make like probably a hundred easily a couple hundred aether crystals in an hour just farming and one aether crystal is equivalent to 1.3 respec you only get 55 devotions max unless your sea cleaner is uh, you know alerting you then maybe you get 60 but you get 55 devotions max now as for the progression of the devotions um, devotions are activated by touching a shrine there's two types of shrines there's a desecrated shrine, which is simply, it's it's like kind of red and viney. It just, you summon it, it summons mobs, you kill it. Then there's a sacrifice shrine where you have to sacrifice something to it, and then it gives you the point. You can get devotions out of Crucible, you can get devotions out of every act, you can get devotions out of every difficulty. I would probably say for the progression of, of your devotions, most players will find about all of their devotions towards the end of uh, the first difficulty, assuming you're doing the expansions. Otherwise, it's not common to finish it maybe halfway through Ultimate where you'll get 55. Don't feel scared or anything. Remember that you can always go back to previous difficulties and unlock your devotions. You can also simply Google where to find the devotion trees and it will pop up for you. I will also link another link here. This one is a bit outdated as well because not everything is updated to the new expansion, but this will still help you out a lot. It's basically a map hack website um, which you can use to basically explore all of Grimdon, right? So you can see where all the shrines are. Um, not all of them, but, you know, majority of them. I don't really feel like hovering over them right now, but it also helps you quest. But for the most part, I do believe there are shrines on here. Um, you can also use Grim Tools. I think Grim Tools has a link for it on there as well. Maybe this map is not exactly the best necessarily. Um, another big thing to note in your, in your tree, uh, I want to touch up on a couple things. So, Offensive ability and reducing targets defensive ability is very important in Grim Dawn. A lot of players lack damage and a lot of the time it's not necessarily that they're really lacking damage like they are, but it's more so they're not prioritizing their debuffs correctly. So something like Scorpion, for example, goes an extremely long way for literally any build until you get something to replace it. So Scorpion uh, basically reduces targets defensive ability for five seconds. This means you are more likely to hit them, so you're more accurate. You're more likely to crit them, and I could totally be wrong on this one, but correct me if I am. You may actually have increased crit damage because offensive ability does, I believe, scale it, just not as much as the raw crit damage stat. So using things like these to your advantage is very, very important because it helps scale your character. You know, not every bit, not some builds get way higher crit and struggle getting debuffs. Other builds have way better debuffs, but struggle getting one thing. So remember, as I told you in the beginning, you use your devotions to kind of fix that for you. Anyway, though, I hope this video helped you guys out with kind of uh, you know, how people are getting their devotions. I know a lot of the times, even myself included, we'll create a guide and we'll tell you to get all these devotions, but you won't understand exactly the process of getting them. And you basically just have to use the process as I explained for the hawk, you know? And just in case you guys need me to do it again, uh, you can see I can't even remove it actually because it gives itself its own bonus. If we wanted to get lion, right? Lion would be, we put a point here to unlock lion. Lion now gives us three. So let's use an example. We want to get Targo. So Targo is a 6-4. I currently have four here. So to get Targo, I'm going to need six blue. What is the best I can get for blue? I know that eel gives us five. So what can I do? Put a point here. Bam, I can grab five. Then, for example, I know I can do Targo. If Well, Targo gives a one constellation bonus, which means I can actually complete Targo. Boom. And then I could now, for example, remove this yellow, right? And you just keep basically ping-ponging this back and forth to however you want, you know, to get your result. Anyway, though, that's pretty much about it. Like I said, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys are really enjoying the Grim Dawn content. I'm having a lot of fun on my character. Uh, we're actually 
doing real well. So if you're interested, feel free to check on the streams. Uh, I'm still sorry. Sorry, I'm still farming for my goal set for the summoner. Uh, no luck with that yet, but we're saving up materials to transmute. So that's also really, really nice. But like I said, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash fox. Take care. Have a wonderful time, everybody.